we've been invited to the magnificent Greystoke Castle in Cumbria for one of the most eagerly anticipated premieres for a generation, the launch of the new Daystate 303 Wolverine. Looking around the beautiful and historic Greystoke Castle, Daystate couldn't have chosen a better location to launch their new flagship Big Boar hunting air rifle. Greystoke's rich and magnificent history were everywhere to be seen, in the main hall and the grounds, as was Daystate's. Everything they've learnt in their 35 year history of air rifle manufacture has clearly established them as the industry leader when it comes to modern air gun design. I'm eager to see how all of that acquired knowledge has been put to good use in the Wolverine. We started off uh, in 1973 in a farm building in Derbyshire and moved on and moved on from there to where we are today. But all the time we've been cutting the leading edge of uh, development in pre-charged rifles. What we decided to do six years ago was a development of um, our Air Ranger model, which was a, the first high-powered rifle that we'd ever made from the ground up. The Air Ranger was designed to be 100 foot-pounds from day one, and we actually detuned it to 12 foot-pounds for the UK market. But I felt at the time when we were doing that rifle, that it was a little bit on the heavy side compared to the Theoban Rapid. So we implemented two things. We implemented a lightning policy on the existing rifle and the new development project to bring in a lighter rifle. Later on, this rifle was electrified, put into the electric version uh, to become a lightweight wolf, a wolverine, if you like. And this was the basis of the rifle that we're launching today. Um, I have here the wolverine, which in this guise is the wolverine 303. The Wolverine 303 took, uh, took over the Wolverine project about two, two and a half years ago now. And we've been developing a 303 calibre of the Wolverine since then. It has a barrel, which is actually developed by Frank Walther, who's the lead at Walther Barrels himself. The pellet was developed by JSB in the Czech Republic, who, as you know, is the world leading pellet manufacturer. And they were working from a brass handmade barrel that we supplied from Harper to develop a pellet. Uh, we had lots of complaints from the barrel manufacturers that they needed a gun and pellets. We had uh, complaints from the pellet manufacturer that they needed barrels and guns, and we were complaining that we needed pellets and barrels. So it was quite tricky to get everybody to work pretty much in the dark, um, but with development parts that we were able to send them. But it all worked, and about uh, eight months ago, the first part started to come through and we were able to do some comprehensive testing. And this is the rifle that we've got here. As you can see, it's quite a large rifle, weighs uh, 4.2 kilos, 9.5 pounds. Uh, it has a 23 inch, 60 centimetre barrel and it's shrouded to try and reduce the muzzle crack. So you'll hear one being shot in a minute and you'll appreciate that it's not the quietest rifle without a silencer. The breech block is made from a 7075 aluminium, which is sometimes called Urgle. Uh, it's a titanium magnesium mix, so it's a, it's a very light and very strong alloy. But it's not just the bit you see, the whole of the gun all the way through is one solid lump and everything is machined into it to give it torsional strength. One of the problems we found on a 303 rifle was that the gun flexes as you fire it and the converted rifles that we were using in prototype were actually bending when you fire the rifle. And there was a real danger of the breech blocks blowing off the top of the guns. And the, so we, we developed it so it didn't have a breech block. We just styled it to make it look like one. There's no mistake that this was developed for the American market. We went into this, the American market wants more power, more power, more power. So we developed it really for the U USA market first. And while we were developing a new engine for day state, we put in some features that would be um, popular in the States where they're more used to bolt action four ball rifles. And one of the problems you have with an air rifle is safety. Uh, with a four ball rifle, when you open the bolt and you show clear, you can see the chamber, you can see the magazine recess, and it clearly cannot be fired. If you do that with a conventional air gun, you open the bolt, you've cocked the gun. You've now made the gun even more dangerous than it was with the bolt closed. You generally can't see in the barrel to see what's going on and if you pull the trigger the hammer would come forward anyway and a blast of air at least, if not a blast of air and a pellet, would disappear off downrange. So 
The conventional safety for a full bore rifle doesn't work on an air gun, which requires re-education for air guns, which is difficult when the guy buys it in a store in Kansas. So we designed the rifle so that when the bolt was opened, it automatically switches the rifle off. So showing a bolt open on the Wolverine is actually a safe thing to do. Once the bolt handle is lifted, the trigger is deactivated and locked, and with the bolt open, the rifle cannot be fired. In addition to that, we put a second safety catch on the back, which is a manual safety catch that allows you to have an additional safety on the rifle. Other features, the magazine has been enlarged to 303 calibre, so 7.62 size hole. You, we can only get five shots into the magazine because of that. Um, but we've also brought in an innovation which is uh, six years old now and patented, and that is a magazine indexing pin. When you have a close-up on the Wolverine later on, you can have a look at this. And what this clever little device does is instead of having activating arms, as we do on conventional, uh, everybody else's rifle and our other rifles, the indexing pin only moves when the rifle is fired. So if you don't fire the rifle, the magazine won't rotate. So just cocking the bolt backwards and forwards will not load more than the existing pellet until you fire the rifle, in which case the indexing pin will activate the magazine and it'll move when you cock the bolt to its next position. The indexing pin is also geared to the pressure in the reservoir. So another problem with pre-charged pneumatics is as the air pressure drops, there becomes a point where there's not enough air to push the pellet out of the barrel, particularly on the 303 version. And the indexing pin is geared to stop working at 100 bar. So if you continue to shoot the rifle below its operating pressure, when you get down to 100 bar, the magazine will stop rotating. It's stopping the rifle from jamming as the pressure gets too low. And we can change that gearing for different calibers and different models for the future. So future day states will not double load and will not fire when there's insufficient air in it. So all these features have been built into this brand new rifle, and I hope you agree, they're quite desirable features. We decided to make the rifle completely ambidextrous. It has an ambidextrous stock designed by the master himself, Gary Kane, and then made by Minelli in Italy uh, to our design. And they tidied up the design a little bit to make it uh, fully ambidextrous. The bolt in indexing system of the Wolverine um, can be changed by the user to be left and right handed, as can the magazine be moved from left and right hand as well. So you can have a fully ambidextrous rifle, um, which the user can alter from left to right. Power. Uh, we actually found that we had more power than we needed, which is not something you normally come across in air gun design. We felt the potential high power of this rifle was about 150 foot-pounds, but the shot count would be about two. So we tuned it down until we've reached uh, probably 12 to 15 shots now at just over 100 foot-pounds, and we think 100 foot-pounds is enough. With that pellet, at that speed and that power, around about 950 to 1,000 feet per second. Uh, it produces an incredibly powerful but also accurate round. And we've noticed that we've regularly got 30 millimeter groups at 100 yards with this rifle. You have to be a good shot to do it, but the rifle's capable of doing it if you are. So high power, good accuracy, innovative design, 303 caliber, Made in England, this is the Wolverine 303. Any questions please, on, the, on the new rifle? Once Tony has finished his presentation, we all move into the beautiful gardens where two-time world field target champion Stuart Hancock demonstrates the Wolverine in action. The entire group then have the opportunity to shoot the Wolverine for themselves. What's immediately clear is the Wolverine is particularly loud for an air rifle but it sure does pack a punch. The crowd seem to enjoy firing the Wolverine and the chatter amongst those watching on revolves around its accuracy, performance and ease of use. For sure, Daystate have achieved their goal of impressing the day's attendees, but will it pass the team wild test of approval? 
With those testing the rifle showing varying degrees of ability, it's impossible for me to judge the rifle's accuracy and qualities. I really need to get my own hands on the Wolverine in order to properly put it through its paces. However, I decline the offer of firing the rifle for myself today as I've been kindly sent my own Wolverine and will definitely be putting it to the test soon enough for Team Wild TV. Keith does manage to get his dirty mitts on a Wolverine and he's as accurate and deadly as ever. Did you hit it? No. <laughs> Day State's Mark Andrews also gives a demonstration on how the Wolverine can be easily adjusted to suit a left-handed shooter. You simply detach the bolt handle and reattach it, pointing the other side of the rifle. It seems simple enough. As the event draws to a close, I catch up with Tony Bilas to find out his thoughts on the day. So Tony, what a phenomenal day. You've got to be really pleased with oh, how it's all worked out. It's worked out perfectly. And look at this weather. Forecast rain for six days on the trot and we get a break of sunshine. Yeah, right but the, the sun shines on the righteous, I hear. They do, hear, they do say that, don't they? Yeah. But what a, what a perfect setting and what a great day for the Wolverine. This has been a phenomenal launch. When we saw this castle, we thought we've just got to do it here. And I know you've uh, designed the, uh, the rifle for the US market, but I'm getting a lot of feedback from people who are actually considering using it here in the UK as an alternative foxing and, and small vermin rifle rather than a normal two twos. Well, that's the feedback we're getting. Obviously, we designed it for the American market, but where power is everything and they need a high power rifle they've got a lot of range they've got a lot of big quarry to shoot so we came at it from that point of view but there are other markets are going to want it as well who wouldn't want a 303 caliber air gun That's well, I, I do <laughs> thank you <laughs> but it's not just that air guns obviously people just get used to them being shot at 35 40 50 yards we've seen Stuart who is a world-class shot I might add consistently hitting a very small kill zone target, 40 mil target, at 100 yards, again and again and again. This Wolverine is also a consistent performer as well as a powerful rifle. Well, we were a bit shocked at how good it was. I mean, you obviously hope for the best when you start on the project, but you could never really be too sure. Remember, we were starting blind. We were starting with a new rifle, a new caliber, and a new barrel. And put those three together, you know, it could have been a recipe for disaster. But what we've ended up with is actually a phenomenal rifle and Stuart's been shooting 100 yards across, across into the undergrowth there and consistently knocking down a 40 mil kill zone on the target, which is quite an achievement. But more than that, we've had the press doing it as well. Well, this is the thing, although yeah. Stuart is a world-class shot, yeah. he then puts the rifle on there and, you know, average guys are also shooting consistently and knocking that target right. down. That's so you've got to be really pleased yeah. that it's worked out like that on a day like this as well. That's it's a very important right. day for There was for the, the opportunity of Stuart making a right fool of himself. But, uh, he still might, he still might do that. <laughs> Yeah, the first shot he got it down and we were you could see he'd been practicing all week with it just to make sure that he hadn't got it wrong mm -hmm. it's clearly didn't want to appear an idiot on the day and there were 60 people out there watching him take one shot with perhaps a 15 20 mile an hour crosswind at 100 yards on a 40 mil disc which you could barely see with a camera with, with, no no pressure <laughs> well there were four cameras on him four video cameras and about 20 handheld cameras and he fired that one shot and down it went. Yeah, and, and it has been doing so all afternoon. That's right, yeah. So, so Tony, thank you very much for inviting me along today and thank you for spending the time to, to talk to our viewers pleasure. at home. Yeah. Now, seeing as Tony and Daystate have gone to so much effort to develop the 303 Wolverine, we have to take it out into the field. So keep, keep tuned to Team Wild TV over the next few weeks. You'll see long-range terminal velocity tests, long-range ballistics and long-range hunting. And hopefully, when we go to Hungary, we're going to shoot some pigs and some larger game as well. So, Tony, thank you very much indeed, and good luck with the rest of the launch. Thank you. To find out more about the Daystate Wolverine, go to daystate.com forward slash Wolverine. Be sure to subscribe to Team Wild TV to see us putting the Wolverine through some vigorous testing out in the field.